Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at some ADPs and how they've risen or fallen from the beginning of September until today. So what I've done is I've compiled the ADPs today and basically the end of August, early September, we're going to look at who's been rocketing up the charts, who's been falling down that could provide you with some value and some newcomers who are finally getting ADPs who were unranked previously. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We'll start it off with guys who previously were unranked and are now uh, apparently getting an ADP. One of these guys I'm thinking is a data anomaly. Peter Morazic apparently was not ranked and now is ranked at 80 ADP, which is crazy high for a guy who's on such a bad team. He does get a ton of total save volume, uh, and he did have a pretty decent save percentage, but they're not going to win a lot of games. His goals against is going to be terrible. Uh, so this is a weird one for me in terms of ADP. By the way, what you're looking at numerically with this bar graph, I had to rate everybody who was unranked as 1,000 ADP just to have proper filtering on the player hub and the custom rating tool. So if you're using those tools, you can actually filter and find guys that are uh, you know, lower rated than where you're drafting and you know, find some value that way. But I had to mark these guys as uh, 1,000 ADP. So this is pretty much irrelevant for this slide. The next two will have a little bit more relevance. But as we look at the rest of this list, one theme that uh, shows up right off the bat is a lot of hitters. So Jeremy Lazan up to 127.3. You also have uh, Gudis, 164.5. You've got Janot, 172.9. Uh, up at the top, you've got Bennett. You've got Jacki. You've got Marcus Foligno. You've got a number of guys, Romanov, who's a hitter and blocker. So basically, as uh, regular players have been starting their drafts and doing more mocks, that's when some of the guys with you know bangers leagues are getting into these mocks, and that's what's populating these ADPs now. At the beginning of the year, I don't believe that any of those uh, you know big hitters were being factored in into that Yahoo ADP because it was mainly bots that were you know populating those mock drafts. So as people start to filter in and use their actual league format, that's what we're seeing here with a bunch of these hitters finally reaching the top. And that's good because this will inform you of where you need to reach to grab those guys. Gudis has been as high as 90 in my league because it's a bangers league. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on as you move forward if you're in a league like that. A couple of other things, some younger guys, Dustin Wolf, Logan Stankoven. Uh, we have Gabe Landeskog, not a young guy, but coming back into the league. He's getting drafted at ADP 141. Um, I do think that's a little rich just because of the fact that he hasn't played in two seasons and we don't know if he's ready for opening night and where he's going to play but the upside is there in terms of his completeness he was very complete before he left but I don't necessarily see uh, wasting a draft pick on him I would probably pick him up off the waiver wire after the draft if I were going to go that route one other thing I see is Seelov Shelovs, Seelovs. Uh he's on the board now 172.3 and that was a result I believe of the Demco news that he may or may not be ready a lot of uncertainty about Demko's health as we head towards the draft season. So people are hedging their bets and taking Shelovs here at 172. So that's something to keep an eye on. Some of these goaltenders are, <clears throat> you know, a crapshoot and you never know what you're going to get. And I think the health of uh, Demko plays a huge role in the health and, you know, how good Vancouver is going to be this year. So this is something to keep an eye on if you're looking for depth goaltending. He's a starter that you can get at 172.3 if Demko's out. Some other notes here, Kyle Palmieri is a really good goal scorer. He's at 176. Jack Quinn, another goal scorer at 179. Another hitter in Luke Shen. People are drafting Dylan Holloway for reasons I can't understand. Uh, you have Drew Ann here. He's uh, unranked now, you know, getting back into this ranking range. He had a pretty decent season last year, uh, but we will have to wait and see if he's on that top power play. And then a couple of other guys. You got Joel Hofer. I guess that's Bennington Hedge if you don't think Bennington's going to have the kind of season he had last year. Adam Fantilli, a lot of people forgot about him because he was banged up a little bit last year, but he had a pretty decent season uh, for a rookie, and there's a number of guys like that, Logan Cooley, Adam Fantilli, who are starting to emerge. You see Mason McTavish down here, 168. Some of these younger guys who had a pretty good earlier season in their career or showed some flashes early on, they're now starting to round into form and become a little bit older, more mature. So these guys could actually become fantasy options as we move forward, so that's something I'm keeping an eye on as we move towards draft season. Next, we're going to take a look at the risers. These are guys who have risen in ADP by a significant margin. And the first guy that sticks out here by a wide margin is Nedeljkovic. So I might have to give some props here to Fantasy Puck because I believe one of their videos they were talking about, uh, they were fading Tristan Jari and potentially scooping up Nedeljkovic. Maybe it's just people realizing that Nedeljkovic stole the number one job last year and Jari has been kind of hit or miss 
the last couple of seasons. Jari did have six shutouts, but everything else was kind of terrible. His record, his save percentage was 903, and he was underperforming consistently uh, when he was in the lineup, and you never know if he's going to be in your lineup. So people are hedging with Nedeljkovic. I wouldn't necessarily bet on a bounce back from Pittsburgh. They really haven't done anything to address their team needs. But with that said, he's climbed or dr- I guess dropped in ADP, however you want to phrase it. But going from 177.5 to 133, that's a huge difference of 44 and a half points or ADP, whatever you want to say. Uh, then you got two other goalies, Ingram and Vimelka. People are, I guess, waking up and realizing that Utah is going to be a pretty decent team and could be a, a bubble playoff team. So they want this goaltending tandem, or at least one of the two. So each of these guys has flashed in the past couple of seasons, and Ingram was the better of the two last year. So he's got the 129 ADP, and then you've got Vimelka at 192 down to 168. So um, I think this is, again, some of those regular people, not bots, uh, factoring in into these ADPs. So that could be a good sign if you're looking for that tandem. You have Malkin here. That's not really that interesting. He's a you know shot in the dark there. He was a point-per-game guy at points in his career. He's kind of trailed off over the last little bit. So uh, if they can get that power play going, that would be a bump for him. But I don't necessarily see that going uh, in the right direction as we stand today. Uh, Another goaltender, a couple goaltenders we got to talk about here. Joey Decord, potentially the starter in Seattle. They were a very, very good defensive team. So if you're going to bet on a good defensive team and a guy who stole the starter job last year, Decord's a really good bet at 159. Um, same type of thing with Cam Talbot. He's coming over to Detroit. He had a really great season, uh, statistically, at least for the first half, first three quarters, two thirds, whatever it was. Uh, he was really good on that LA Kings team, but he had a much better defense in front of him. So this will be interesting to see if he can match that same production that he had last year with the Detroit Red Wings this year. Nachushkin, he's going to be out till mid November, but obviously you want to take a flyer on him anywhere near this ADP because he's an elite level winger when he's in the lineup. So if he can get back into your lineup mid-November, I would take him a lot earlier than this, to be honest with you. And then Eustace Anunin, this is a guy who will be featured in one of my videos coming up here. But if I don't end up getting around to that because I'm extremely busy, Anunin had incredible per game numbers last year. He had almost, I believe it was a 928 save percentage and was significantly outplaying Alex Georgiev. So this play, I think, is a bet on Georgiev sucking and Anunin potentially taking over starts. Maybe not the number one job, but taking 1A, one, you know, going from a 30, 35 start volume to maybe 40, 45, maybe even 50 if he can outplay Georgiev for long stretches. And then obviously here you have Chikrin, who could potentially be the power play quarterback in Washington. I don't know how that's going to pan out because John Carlson's been there forever, but uh, this is probably some people factoring that in. There should be a bounce back on Shea Theodore. He's a guy who is rocketing up the charts here. 109 ADP now. Sharon Govich, a lot of people forgot about him, but as I think these regular people get back into these mock drafts, uh, they're recognizing that he was a 30-goal scorer, and you can pick him up at 160 or 160.5. So a lot of value to be found here. Another interesting name here, Spencer Knight, a guy who hasn't been drafted in fantasy in a while. They're, uh, I guess, going to roll with him as the backup to Bobrovsky, and this may be a bet on Bobrovsky having a regression season. I don't know what it is, but Spencer Knight was a guy I was high on a couple of years ago, and it just never worked out for him. Um, I've always faded Bobrovsky, and if you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you know why, but uh, I don't even know at this point if I'm going to go Spencer Knight. They do have a pretty good defensive team, but they lost a couple of top six defensemen, and there's a lot of change after a Stanley Cup, a short season or off season. so uh, I'm not sure how excited I'll be to pick Spencer Knight in this range, but if he falls on the waiver wire, I'll give it a shot. A couple of other guys, Thompson. Logan Thompson is uh, one of the guys on Washington now. Uh, Washington has Lindgren and Thompson. Both of those guys I would handcuff together. They have a pretty good defensive team. Those goaltenders are pretty good at points. Last year, Lindgren was one of the best goalies in fantasy, and same thing can be said about Logan Thompson. So this is probably a reflection of that. People remembering Thomas Hurdle is on Vegas, I guess. So he's up to 142 from 156, a 13.7 decrease, increase, whatever you want to say about it. Um, Then you also have Latang. He's been jumping up 127.2. I think people remember his peripherals now, uh, and as you start to factor in those category leagues with hits and blocks, that's where he's coming in and getting a little bit uh, drafted higher. And then some other guys up here, you got Dobson. This is an interesting uh, note here, up to 54.9. So people are recognizing how great of a season he had last year. I mentioned him as number two in my breakout players last year. Uh, so he's been, I guess, rewarded be uh, you know in the fantasy community with a 54.9 ADP. 
That's the premium you're going to have to pay for a defenseman like this, but it's still pretty good value considering his blocks coverage, his power play usage, and everything else. Um, here's Linus Allmark. So I guess people are uh, a little bit higher on Allmark than um, maybe I am. I do think that he's a pretty you know solid option if you're looking for start volume, but he's going from a you know team like Boston that was very good defensively down to a team more similar to Buffalo uh, where he used to play. So it's going to be a little bit hit or miss in terms of his goals against. He's going to get a lot more shots. He's probably still going to be way above expected. Uh, he will probably make a ton of saves, but the wins might not be there. Uh, definitely not the way that they were in Boston. And the goals against will probably be a lot higher. So um, this is maybe somebody that you would want if you're fading goaltenders until the seventh, eighth round. Um, but this is you know still a little bit rich for me. We're not going to cover everybody, but one other guy, Vasilevsky. He's jumped up 10 spots to 35.9. I got him in the 50s last year. That was probably the last time you'll ever see him in that range. He used to be a first rounder. So this is probably still good value if you believe in him. Uh, I do think their team defense has gotten worse over time. And Vasilevsky had the worst season of his career last year. So it's probably a bounce back year for him. But you're going to have to pay a premium on that. Now let's switch it up and go to the fallers, the guys who have dramatically... Uh, gotten a huge discount in terms of ADP. Kuzmenko, the number one guy up here, he was in the thumbnail, 62 spots from 105 down to 167. That's crazy. He's a guy who has that goal scoring potential, but he just doesn't stay consistent. Uh, he's been up and down the lineup. He came over, started really hot with Calgary, and then went down the lineup and was getting you know fourth line ice time. So it's really hard to predict what's going to happen with him. Elias Lindholm coming over to Boston. People, I would assume, are betting that he's going to be the top line center and that was priced in at the beginning but apparently they're fading him as they realize that there's some other options and other things that they need in their league maybe some hitters some blockers some other category coverage specialists and that's probably why he's dropping but even still that is a significant drop 30.8 spots drake batherson he's been a fantasy guy that's been uh, really good for shot volume he's had some hits uh, a couple goals here and there he was a power play guy at points but um, dropping from 89 to 116. So now providing you some decent value there. Same with Nazem Kadri, going from 133, where I would have picked him anyway, now down to 160. So he's a three-shot-per-game guy, 30-goal guy, um, and he's giving you incredible value at 160, so that's good news. All of these guys should provide you with some value, some more than others, but uh, obviously there's some really good value plays here. One of the guys that sticks out to me in HS uh, down to 123. He's been way higher than this in the past. People are kind of fading him. I don't know why. If you have game-winning goals in your points league, pick up Natchez. He's been really good for that, especially in overtime over the last number of years. Uh, a couple of other guys on here. I don't know if I see um, his tandem mate, but Marc-Andre Fleury going from 144 to 163. And then uh, the other goaltender, Gustafson, should be on a bounce back year. Last year, things did not go well for him. The year before that, he was close to a 930 save percentage. You can get this tandem around this ADP, and I'd be looking at that if I were at the back end of the snake and I was looking to fade goaltending really, really late uh, with that zero goalie strategy. Slavkowski getting a huge discount. That's a little bit surprising considering the breakout that he had last year and the hype around him. 109 down to 125. That's a little bit surprising. Uh, Demko, this is... Maybe not surprising going from 44.2 to 58. That's all health related. I would assume he's, uh, you know, going to be drafted relatively high if they mention, you know, pre, you know, prior to this the preseason or during the preseason that he's healthy, he's ready to go. He will probably go back up to that 44 mark or somewhere in that range. Here's some of the hitters, but this is the opposite for Jacob Truba. Some of that offseason noise might have come back and affected his ADP, but this is still really great value. He was one of the top two or three hits and blocks defensemen that you could find in fantasy last year. So forget about his offensive numbers. They're not going to be there. The shot volume is not that great, but the hits and blocks will always be there. He does that pretty consistently. Owen Tippett is another interesting name, down to 83 from 71.6, so a 12.3 difference. And he's been a guy that I've had on a number of teams the last two or three years. He's very, uh, he loves to shoot the puck. He does hit. He scores goals. He's on their power play. So he's a guy... Uh, you know, him, Konechny, these are value plays in this 80 range. And uh, if he continues to fall, I'm going to be jumping on top of that as we move through the drafts. I'm not going to go through everybody down here, but uh, Dylan Cousins, people forgot about him. A couple of years ago, he had a really great breakout season. Last year, things did not go as well for him. But Paterka is back. 
Quinn is back. If they can reunite that line and get some chemistry going, this is incredible value at 179. He was close to a point per game guy two years ago and uh, had some stretches where he was very fantasy relevant. So to get him at 179, it's kind of like that point of the draft where you're taking on some risk. You're throwing some darts at the dartboard, hoping you hit. And this is an incredible value play if he can find that chemistry with those two line mates. <clears throat> Excuse me. Up next, Seth Jones. This is a guy who's a power play quarterback playing with Connor Bedard, an improved power play, it should be at least. Uh, and he's going at 156, getting faded from 145. So this is a guy you should be all over. He's got really good blocks coverage on top of that. The shot volume is not bad at all. The power play numbers should come up. The assist numbers have pretty much been there. Um, and people kind of forgot about him playing on Chicago last year. So that's going to benefit you if you're paying attention and you can grab him at 156. Now, goaltending, there's two guys right here. Uh, Lukanen, so one thing that I, I was looking at the data and I saw Devin Levi's name and people were super high on him last year and he was getting drafted way, way, way too early. Now might be a good time to pick up Levi. So if UPL starts to falter at 95 ADP, maybe that's a little bit too rich for you, but maybe you pick up Levi. I don't have his ADP off the top of my head, but uh, he's a guy who everybody was high on coming out of college, had a couple games, played pretty well. Last year, things didn't go that well for him. He went back down to the minors. This could be an opportunity to pick up Levi in that range, or at, definitely not at that range, not at 95, but way, way deeper uh, if you're going to get UPL at that range. And then Kachetkov. People have been asking me about him. Uh, Freddie Anderson had incredible numbers when he was healthy. All the, you know, the Kachetkov value depends completely on Anderson's health. So if Anderson's healthy, I would take Anderson over Kachetkov. You're getting an insurance 1B slash potential starter in Kachetkov. And obviously it's a great defensive team, but they've had some turnover on that blue line. They've lost uh, a couple of guys. And I don't know how uh, that, that blue line is going to hold up compared to years past. Obviously they're a well-coached team. It should hold up pretty well, but uh, you, this is a little rich for me in terms of ADP at 95. One guy I'm super high on this off season, Mika Zibanejad dropping from 64 to 72. And please keep dropping so I can grab you much later than that. Zibanejad cemented on that top power play. You know what he's going to bring. He's a point per game guy, has 40 plus goal potential, has hit that at stretches in the past, but has never put that together for a full 40, 50 goal season. Um, but this is a guy, This he should not be drafted this late. He should be going a lot earlier than that. Same could be said for Mark Stone. Stone apparently was supposed to be missing most of this season. As soon as the season ended, I heard that he was going to be out all season this year, 24-25, but apparently he's back and healthy. So if that's the case and you're going to get relatively healthy Mark Stone, 157.2 ADP is huge value and he's dropped from 148. So people are still fading him for some reason, but if you can grab him and if you can bear that injury risk. So he's going to be in and out of the lineup. You know that you're going to have to have an IR, IR plus spot, a couple of IR plus spots to be able to roster him all season long. But he's a huge contributor, about a point per game guy, used to be a huge shot volume guy. Um, and they need some scoring in Vegas. He's top six in Vegas, should be on their top power play to get him at 157 is kind of crazy. Now, I didn't want to spend too much time on this. That's going to do it for this video. But if you want this uh, visualization, if you want the player hub, if you want the custom rating tool, the goalie hub, or any of the other tools that I have, you can visit the Patreon link in the description below. And uh, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.